Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Divine encounter puts an end to prolonged delays. It removes barriers of all kinds. Divine encounter. You might have been waiting for something. And all of a sudden when the angel of the Lord visited Zechariah in the book of John chapter 1. And the Bible said that even though she, he and his wife, they, have been, they, do, they don't have a child. And all of a sudden the angel of the Lord visited them. Some of us, you will receive angelic visitation. Amen. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. That man that was at the seaside for 38 years and he was sick. He, he said, Jesus asked him, do you want to be healed? But there was a divine encounter, and that divine encounter only happened once a year. That means when there is a stirring of the water. But before it could get into the water, someone else has already gotten into it. There are some divine encounters that you know about, that if you can pray more, if you can do more, God will intervene. But there are some times when Jesus himself will decide to visit. You are going to pray. Say, Jesus, visit my family. Visit my situation. Visit my life and give me a direct encounter. Did somebody get what I'm saying? Give me what? A direct encounter. That encounter will happen when the Lord will send you the specific help you need. In terms of people, letter, human being, who will they, they will take it upon themselves to give you what you are looking for. Say, Lord, send me what? I mean, direct what? Encounter that will take me forward. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Lord, this morning, we pray, Lord, for direct encounters. That you will grant unto me direct encounter that will propel me into my destiny. Lord, direct encounter with information. Lord, direct encounter with personalities. Lord, direct encounter with individuals. Lord, direct en encounter with angels that with divine beings that will help me to fulfill my destiny. Lord, grant unto me divine, divine, direct encounter in the precious name of Jesus. Direct divine encounter in the precious name of Jesus. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Please don't get tired because last night the Lord really propelled me. I was, I was filled with so much in the spirit that the Lord said that for everybody in the Leaves Bible Church, he said, I intend to move forward. And I came back to my wife and said, God said, power them. What? Power them through prayer. Power them into that destiny. You see, no matter how beautiful your car is, if it is not powered, it can't move. And you see, no matter how colorful the car is, the size of the engine determine how fast it can go. Are you with me? If you put uh, an under Quintet or Toyota Tassel beside a BMW 5 Series and you put them on M1, they will move at different rate. And if you put smart between them, it looks smart. But no matter how smart, some of us look smart, we dress well, but we are not moving, we are not moving forward. We have all the dresses. We have all the makeup. We have the suit. We have the tie. In fact, you have the portfolio. You have the CV. But you are not being recognized. You are not being accepted. You are wonderful. You are handsome. You are beautiful. But they are not approaching you. It's because there is a power that powers into fulfillment. <laughs> You're going to say the power of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in the book of Romans, it said, if the spirit of he that raised Jesus from dead lives in you, he said, the same spirit will walk quick in your mother body. You're going to say only God's power. Power Jesus to fulfill his destiny. Power my destiny. Power my life. Power my husband. Power my wife. Power this church. Power my family. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Only God's power. The power of the Holy Spirit. We ask that you power everyone under the sound of my voice. Power me for, for the fulfillment of my destiny. Power my family. Power my wife. Power my children into good character. Power every children in this church into intelligence, into understanding, into comprehension of what they have been taught at this date, into the fear of God. Holy Spirit of the living God, power us to develop values that will take us into a glorious destiny. Holy God's power. 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 Power my life. Power my destiny. 
Power my life. Power my destiny. In the precious name of Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus. You're going to pray against every flood of confusion. The Bible said in the book of Isaiah, it said, when the enemy shall come in, it said, like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will raise a standard against them. Are you with me? We are going to say every flood, flood of confusion, baffling or battling against my lifting and my achievement by divine inter intervention be removed. Be removed. Every flood that is flooding my life, what a flood, one issue to another, one situation to another, it's like you are not having rest. This one will call, it's bad news. That one will come, it's misunderstanding. Everything just going, every flood that is flooding my life. I want fat. Let me teach us HLBC how to pray because I see some of us looking at me. <laughs> you pray your way into breakthrough. Are you get what I'm saying? I know I teach a lot, but I say something. One of the greatest secrets of my life is prayer. Are you getting me? If you don't groan, you can't grow. Are you with me? If you don't what? If you don't groan, you can't grow. Nobody can pray on your behalf. And prayer will lift you from ordinariness. He said, when you see nonsense, when you hear about people saying nonsense, and somebody's life is nonsense. The difference between nonsense and sense is just the none. When you are not praying, you are not making sense. Are you with me? Where anything you lack is making you to miss us on something major. So non-prayer will make a nonsense of your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? If, when you have no wisdom, that is non-wisdom, everything, none, is an absence of value. When you are not praying, you are lacking. It's like your destiny is crawling. I want to teach us how to pray. When we say we pray in the name of Jesus, you open that mouth and say, in the name of Jesus. We are going to pray that prayer again. You will say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every flood of confusion against my life, I avert you. So let's pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, every flood of confusion against my life, flooding towards my life, flooding towards my destiny, flooding towards my family, flooding towards my ministry, I decree the power of God to avert you, the standard of the name of Jesus to remove you. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, every wind of confusion, every wind, every flood of confusion, flooding into my life, flooding into my situation, I avert you in the name of Jesus. Flooding into the life and destiny of every member of this church, I avert you in the name of Jesus. In Jesus precious name we pray. In Jesus precious name we pray. Now you are going to pray again. You are going to command the wind of positive change into your life. The Bible says in the book of Luke that Jesus Christ entered into the boat with them. And behold, there arose a storm, a big storm. What a storm? Storms are things that are capable of turning your life upside down. How many of us have ever experienced something, especially in your marriage or finance, where the situation happened and it's, your, it's like your whole marriage is turned what? Upside down. You are not hearing your husband. Your husband is not hearing you. Other people and other faces is like a storm. And then when there is storm, the captain of the ship has to learn what to do. One of the things they do is to empty heavy stuff from, but you are going to command with your mouth. When Jesus arose, he said, peace, be still. You are going to use your mouth to command. Into the rest of this year, from this point onward, I decree with my mouth, Every wind against my life, peace be still. I command the wind of positive change around my life. Open your mouth in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I command the wind of positive change 
to begin to take effect in my life. The wind of change to begin to blow my family. To begin to blow this ministry. To begin to blow every destiny that is here. I command the wind of change in every life. I command the wind of change in every business that is represented here this morning. The wind of change. The wind of transformation. The wind of lifting. In the name of Jesus. The wind of favor. The wind of help. The wind of divine encounter. Mama zoso kepere Leto ne shikreti lebo shaba. Rikato zi beria mo shikle brodebo. Mari gerebo shikreke lebo rodebo shata. Le rigerebo shikreti blaba ya bo shik. Meri gebo shabra leba. Meri debo shikrebo. In Jesus precious name we pray. Say after me, oh Lord. By divine encounter. Throughout this year. And beyond. Enlarge my coast. Enlarge my ter- territory. Enlarge my coast. Enlarge my territory. In the name of Jesus, throughout this year, I will live in peace. I will live in joy. I will live in abundance. I will live in revelation. In the name of Jesus. You are going to pray one more time. You are going to say everything that is hindering God. The man of God said to me yesterday, he says, sir, I want to say to you, not every man of God that you are looking up to will make heaven. Are you getting what I'm saying? So there is no joy in following me or following anyone. He said, don't look at the size of the ministry to follow people. But there are things in men that can stop them from making heaven. Are you with me? You're going to say, Lord, empty me of anything that is capable of stopping me from entering your kingdom. Are you with me? Empty my life of every filthiness. Everything that has the proclivity to stop me from making it into your kingdom. Empty my life of them. Empty my life of rubbish. Empty my life of baggages. Empty my life of bitterness. Empty my life of adultery, of fornication, of lie, of fraud. Say, Lord, empty my life of everything that can stop me from making it into your kingdom. Lord, empty my life. Lord, of everything that easily beset. Anything that is capable of stopping me from entering into my glorious destiny. That can stop me from entering into your divine kingdom. Lord, empty me of them. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say one more time. Say, Lord. Say, oh Lord. Arrange for my change. Say, oh Lord. Give me a new heart. Arrange for my change. Arrange for my transformation. That is because every manufacturer has a spare part. Whatever they made, if God made your mind. So when some of us say, my mind is made up, don't make your mind up because the owner of the mind can remake it. David was misbehaving. At at one point he had to look, he said, create in me, oh God, what? A new heart and renew a right spirit, meaning that he has realized that his spirit has become wrong. Now, your body can be attacked with sickness. Your will and emotion can be attacked so you are getting angry and the Holy Spirit and anger cannot dwell in the same body. So at every time we need a rearrangement of our mind, of our heart. You can't keep carrying a bitter heart into the destiny that God prepared you for. If not, you will destroy something. If somebody gets what I'm saying, you're going to say, Lord, arrange for the change that is necessary in me. Set me up for the surgery that I need that will make me into what you see in me. Arrange me for the perfect change. Open your mouth and begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, arrange me, Lord, for the change that you want to see in me. Lord, arrange me for this spiritual surgery that you would like to do in order for you to align me and position me as the person you want me to be. Lord, arrange every one of us. Arrange us. Rearrange us, Lord. Make organize for my change, Lord. Position me for my change, for my transformation. In the precious name of Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus. From this day, I see you being turned into another man. I see your family turned into another family. If you read very well, that's 1 Samuel chapter 10. You realize that when the spirit of God came upon Samuel, when he was anointed and when he went on forward, and the Bible said that he became another man. From this day, you will become another man. 
And then it was said concerning him in verse 10 and 11. They said that he saw also among the prophets. Because he began to prophesy with them also from this day. The spirit that says it and it is so comes upon your life. Amen. That no longer will you be looking at situations the way they are or the way they look. But you will look at situation and you will speak life. Amen. You will see storm and your mouth will open that greater is he that is inside of me. And than he that is in the world. No longer will you see lack and you'll be watching it. From this day, God will amount, anoint your mouth to be able to create a favorable destiny in the precious name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. For it is you that is at work in us, both to will and to do according to your good purpose. We know your intent. We know your intentions are to move us forward this year. But no, Lord, we have realized that there could be things in us that are too wavy to allow the movement the way you want it to be. This morning, we've asked that for things to be removed from us. We've asked for your divine encounter to propel us into your destiny. We know, because this is the confidence that we have in you, that when we pray, you answer. In fact, we know that before we pray, you have answered. But we thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit that propels us, empower us to be able to reach the answer. This morning, everything that every mouth has proclaimed, I decree is so in the name of Jesus. Amen. That the change will begin to show in your life. Amen. It will begin to show in your business. Amen. It will begin to show in your family. Amen. It will begin to show in this church. Amen. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. It is working. I want you to look at somebody and congratulate them. Congratulate them, please. Say congratulations. Because I am sure that you are moving forward. Say, I am sure that you are moving forward. In the name of Jesus. But look at them again and say, the prayer is not over. Please put your hands together for the Lord. As we shortly go into the word of the Lord this morning, I want us to stand up as it's our habit to read the word of God in this church. Into the anchor scripture, we've been talking on the subject of making this a great year making this what a great year and it's only yesterday that i remembered what the lord said to me at the end of the year uh, i said to the church i was saying to my wife that the lord took me into the book of uh, psalm 2 verse 8 and he said ask of me and i will give unto you the heathen for thy inheritance and the altermost part of the earth for thy possession and in that prayer, as I was praying, what the Lord said to me is that in the journey this year, one thing I want you to stretch on is ability to ask. Somebody say with me, ability to ask. Ability to ask. And that ability to ask is simply prayer. Prayer is communication between son and father. God is our heavenly father, meaning that this year, until I saw the man of God yesterday, and when I saw him, I've never seen someone strange like that. He, you know, someone was going to tell him that I'm coming. And he said, I already know him. He's a pastor. The pastor is in Milton Keynes. Ah, I said, look, I better drive fast even if I collect six speeding ticket. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? And then the first thing he said, there's too much waiting for your church ahead. Too much. He said, but you need the power of prayer. And God told you last year. I, I, I was sitting down. It's like what I was coming. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? He said, so you go back and propel them into that destiny. He said, because there is too much waiting for those guys in the city of Milton Keynes. And someone who had not lived in Milton Keynes before said to me, he said, there's a spirit of witchcraft. I said, I know, sir. Over the destiny of Milton Keynes. Professionals come in there, but people play toe over life after a while. That means like, like there's a ceiling that people cannot jump over. And he said, don't let them run away because it's like that in most cities. There are powers, in case you don't know. Some of them have their office down the road here. There are powers that, con they, they call it the rules in the affairs of men. Some of us have encountered them, so they've offered some people to come and join them in meetings. Are you getting what I'm saying? They set the pace. They don't want certain people to rise beyond certain places. But the fire of the Holy Spirit will move you forward. Amen. Mm, in case you don't know church, we've also, as a church, we have applied for things. And there has been opposition. That is to tell you that there are powers that be. Even after we have done all, this time around we mean everything all that should be done right was done right. Even a silly whatever was still found because there are powers that say, but I decree over your life, no matter what the devil is, no matter when the devil was born, 
no matter what the wish is, you are progressing. Amen. You are moving forward. Amen. Nothing can stop you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Because in the same midst of whatever it is, people are progressing. People are moving forward. And when they are talking about those people, it is these people. Amen. It is you. Amen. Your family. Amen. Your children. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Advancement on every side. In the name of Jesus. Now let's read as is our habit, Matthew chapter 25, verse 14 to 30. It's a long one, but we're going to quickly look at making this year a great one. And we're going to be talking about talent and how to put your talent to use, counting towards eternity. And then we'll go back into prayer. Is somebody excited to be in God's presence this morning? Is somebody excited to be in God's presence this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. As I'm speaking, I see God already working on somebody and doing something for somebody in the name of Jesus. Amen. The power of the whole most high God is already helping you out in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody catch me yesterday in the middle of the night. I don't know how God positioned him again to 12. Walking into the house and he was walking around the street. He's not in church this morning, but he comes here occasionally. And he said, Pastor, I just want to. He said, now God put me here. Somebody said, now God put me here. He said, because the last Sunday I came to church, you prayed. And you said that what I am waiting for, he's been waiting for something for so long. That even if it is one hour remaining in this year, that means last year, that I'm going to get it. He said, you held my hand after the service. He said, sir, it came on the 31st. And he had gone to work, he didn't know. But by the time you reached home, maybe past 10 at night, it's still two hours to, <laughs> to go. He saw the letter there waiting for him. That what he has been waiting for for the whole year is already in his hand. Whatever you are looking for, I decree that it is found in the name of Jesus. Amen. Matthew chapter 25 verse 14. He said, and Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude. Hallelujah. Amen. And saw a great. Chapter 25. Matthew 25 from verse, verse 14. Let's read from the screen. He said, for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, yeah? Mm -hmm. Then, 15? And straightforward took his journey. Verse 16. Then he that had to receive the five talents went and traded with the same and made other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two and also gained other two. But he that had received one went and dig in the earth and eat it the Lord's money. Verse 19. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came it and reckoned with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou five talents. Behold, I have gained beside this five talent more. Verse 21. His Lord said unto him. Hallelujah. I want us to realize something that your life is a gift from God. Your standing here today is a gift. From God. And you have only one life to live. And there are only two ways you can live it. Or three ways you can live it. You can live that life for yourself. You can live that life for the devil. Or you can live that life for God. Joshua said, choose this day who you will serve. In other words, choose this day who you want to live for. The songwriter say, it is you I want to live for. This morning I pray that the Holy Spirit will open your spirit. That you will understand what it means that you are a talent, meaningful for the kingdom of God. I want us to bow down our head. Father, we thank you for the opportunity that you have given us this morning to consider your word. Holy Spirit of the living God, we ask that you speak to us by yourself. Speak to every life. Teach us. Let's go on this journey in making this year a fruitful one, a great one, a year like never before. In the name of Jesus, 
the remaining part of this service, Holy Spirit, let's go on a higher level. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Please put your hands together for the Lord. And we may please take our seats. And please say with me, he lives in me. Making the most of me through his word. I am changing into what he wants me to be. From glory to glory. His word that I'm about to hear will once again reveal his thoughts for me. I receive the word with joy and gladness. The order of my life is glory. You have only one life to live and it's a gift. There are so many people who look at their friend and see their friends as a pain. Whereas that friend could be a talent that God has given to them. We read in this parable, the Bible says that the kingdom of God, and that is the kingdom that you and I belong to. He said, it's like a man that is going on a far journey. And this man gave some talent. If you look at that kingdom of God, you could equate the man he's talking about to Jesus, who is our brother, our father, our help, our Lord and Savior. You look at God seated. God the Father, God the Son, and the, and the Holy Spirit. And he said that he gave some five. Some of us have five friends. Some of us have five children. In fact, maybe somebody here has six children. I know somebody who has 13 children. And there are people who have more. Some of us, us have only one friend. Some of us has two friends. Most of us here that are married have only one wife. At least that we know on record. And I'm sure everybody else has only one husband. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Now, so in case you want to equate yourself to the talent, look at yourself in this light. You are given one talent because you need only one talent. There are certain area of your life that is only one talent you need. For everyone created, you need only one wife, one husband. But do you know that sometimes the way we look at that talent is determine the response of the same man that said, you know, he said, I hid it. Have you not come across people that will not let their wife shine? Hid their wife and every form of talentedness that the wife has is being relegated to her just sitting at home, not having something to do. Every time she has an idea, she doesn't have a good idea. Every time she wants to move forward, she you knows sit down here. Have you seen it? You could equate that to somebody who the Lord gave one talent. Because in different area of your life, the Lord will give you different talent. Are you with me? When it comes to marriage, what the Lord would like to do is to give you only one talent. And what some of us has done is that the same man or the same woman will look at them and will look down on them. Look, they are a talent and the Lord that the Lord has given to you. Are you with me? Now, one of the things that you need to understand about talent is that talents are seed. Um, the first day that I played the piano, I was not as talented as I am today. The first day I played the piano, maybe I just had a touch or just make whatever. But after a while, I went there and I played pam, pam, pam. Now I see my son at the age of seven sit down. And the first time he, he played something on the piano, I thought he was joking. At another time, I would tell him the, the volume is too loud. At another point, I was say, switch it off. You guys are making, you are making noise. After a while, he's played it to the point I will gather people around me. I say, my son, Darren is playing chord. Wow, Darren is playing chord. After a while, I will see me singing, and now he can play chord to you, are alpha, and omega, and he knows the chord with the ten fingers. And I didn't teach him. And I begin to look at that talent, what? Developing. Are you with me? What happened in life is that some of the talents that is in our life, some of us, the environment around us has killed it. Our spouses, our parents have killed it. I used to have a cousin, Peter, who was a, a great footballer. He played fantastic. During our time, he played for our street. He first of all played for our house, you know, house to house we, that we won the game. And then he played for the street from this street to another street. And then he began to play for the community. To the point that, you know, uh, 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 bank, Wema Bank, you know, he played for, he played for Nitel at first. 
And he was being scouted. And an uncle of mine took it upon him, says, let's take this boy abroad to, you know, we were all teenagers. And his father said, over his dead body for Peter to play over. That Peter should study. Peter must go to school. Peter must do this. Now, the father had a printing press. Somebody, how many of us know what a printing press is? You know, a printing press. The father had a printing press, and the father had a talent of printing good press. But this time around, the firstborn had gone on to become a banker. The second born is already at university studying chemical engineering. Now, he only has three boys. Now, which of my boy is going to inherit my talent? So he forced and pounced on Peter that you, all of you can make this one into a bank, that one into engineering. At least you have to do printing. I believe it was a few months ago that Peter was calling me and then we were joking about it. And he was remembering. Today, at 40, 40 year old, about, about 40 year old, he's still playing football for his employment. That's, he was working with Welland Bank and he's the, he's the captain of the football club, playing nationally. And he was still remembering that if daddy had allowed me to play then, maybe I would have been in Hyas. Maybe I would have been in Asna. Maybe I would have been in Mayu. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, there are people around us, they don't mean bad. But sometimes they have the power to stop the talent that God has invested inside of us. I've also seen, especially because some of us are Africans, we have seen that a child begin to grow up, and when my son began to grow up, first of all, when he played guitar, always he played the guitar with the left hand, Darren. And every time he's playing guitar with the le uh, left hand, I'll tell him to switch it. Because I know him to be right-handed, so how come he's playing? I'm thinking that maybe something is wrong with his <laughs> whatever. How can you be turning it, you know, this round? But was it yesterday or two days ago again? Even now that he knows what a guitar is, I saw him play, and he's, he's playing guitar this way. Something tells me he's um, what's it? something dexterous. I'm be dexterous. I mean, I, we have friends, Daniel, also, who write with right hand, but actually played guitar <laughs> with the left hand. Some of us probably know some, some of those people. We also know of uh, Rafa Nadal. Rafa Nadal writes with his right hand, but he plays tennis with his left hand. That is, is ambidextrous. But some of us, parents or friends, we have killed it. Because in our own sense, it doesn't make sense. How can you be doing it like that? We've told people around us, don't do that. Don't do. Now, that is a talent in them that was about to grow that probably had been taken away. I want us to look at the issue of talent today and understand that talent needs to be dealt with with delicacy. It needs to, it is very delicate. And I pray this morning that every talent that is in you that has been destroyed, the power of God will resurrect them in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'll tell you another story of someone that used to be very close to me who arrived in this country probably in 1981 or 1982. And he told his mother that he's going to UK to study law. And he got into the UK and some, some way or the other, he met friends and they changed his mind. And instead he did accounting and he did uh, uh, mortgage, you know, financial. It's not accounting, something to do with financial world. And he did so well in the financial world. But his mother died 2009, 2009 or so. And during the burial of his mother, he made up his mind that he had deceived his mother. 2008, it should be. That I have deceived my mother. I told my mother that I was going to the UK to do law. But now, the mother is dead. From the point of burying his mom, something powered him. Somebody say power. power. Something powered him. And he was powered, even though he was already in his 50s. Are you with me? He came in his 20s. Now he's in his 50s. And something powered him and he remembered that, really, the real thing I wanted to do is law. I am now going back into school to go and do law. So I drove him to the university. I was asking, sir, at this age, 
what are you going back into Fort Knight University to study law for? And he said, look, great, my life is a messenger in Cambridge. And he told me and narrated the story to me. And he said, you know, and you know what? When he was starting, I, think, I thought he couldn't finish because he's too busy. And I watched him start and finish. Not only finish, I went to law school. And right now, he's finding police, political positions in our country just because of the law that he has now read. Is somebody with me? I use the story again with every humility to let you know that no matter what has died inside of you, he can come back alive. He can come back alive. Your talent are the things that God has put inside of you, one, to make your life suitable for you. The best place a fish can survive is where? In water. The best place that human being can survive is where? On the earth. Woman, human being can travel to the moon. We can go to space, but we can't live there. They have made every attempt to make it habitable. Somebody with me. It's still an attempt. Are you with me? But give birth to a human being. Either you give birth in a hospital, you give birth in a room, you give birth in the, uh, in the bush, you give birth in the manger. Anywhere you give birth to a human being, it survives. Is somebody get what I'm saying? Because the right environment for man to strive is on the earth. The same way your talent are embedded inside of you to function a certain way in a certain place and for you to be able to return to God to be able to have another life there. In other words, your talent, secondly, is embedded inside of you as an investment for you to contribute towards eternity. Are you with me? Jesus was saying in the book of Matthew chapter 6, and Luke 6, he said, do not lay your treasures where it will waste and it will rot away. He said, but lay your investment where? In heaven. Talking about the kingdom of God. Thirdly, you can say that your talent are given to you to serve God. He said, the kingdom of God is like a man that is going on a far journey. That... He gave talent unto his servants. And he came back to ask them what they have done with it. Do you know that in eternity, God will ask you, I gave you a voice to speak. Did you speak to somebody about Jesus? For many people, we are more insultive than encourage, that we encourage. Are you with me? Some of us, we are more destructive than we are of a blessing. And do you know that the ability to speak is a talent? The fact that you can say yes. Do you know that speaking English is a talent? Because some people don't, they can't speak a word of English. They can, they have all the money in this world, but they have to learn the language. So some of us that speak, like myself, that speak more than one language, he said he's very, he's talent, he's talented. Because he's what? He's bilingual or he's tri. Lingua or is multilingual. So we see it as a talent because that talent can open doors for you in places that God probably might not be able to open for other people. So you can see several things that God gives to you as a talent. All the languages that you spoke or that you speak are talents that God has given into, unto you. But there are still human beings that are living today who are saying, God has given me nothing. Do you know that the eyes that you have to look, do you know that it's a talent? Some people don't have that eyes to see. And do you know that some of us use that eyes wrongly? When we use that eyes, we see it to see what is wrong in others. But somebody else see what is wrong and find out what the solution is and help them to arrive at the solution. Is somebody with me? That is how talent move from just being a seed to become a talent indeed. For a talent to become valuable. I hope you are taking note. That talent has to be taken from its raw form and processed. Somebody said it will be processed. processed. An unprocessed talent 
is a raw material. Have you ever tried eating raw rice? How many of us have ever tried eating raw rice? How sweet is it? Every rice uncooked make you, <laughs> make you to be eating a poison or something that can what? That can harm you. How many of us have ever tried eating raw yam? In some, some people don't know what yam is anyway. Because some countries, yam is not going there. I only discovered that <laughs> a few years ago. Are you with me? How many of us know what a yam is? Have you ever tried eating raw yam? Now, how many of us know red pepper? You know red pepper? How many of us has ever tried eating raw red pepper? Raw. You, you, even when you take it intentionally, <sighs> because everything unprocessed, but now, you go into Chinese restaurants or Indian restaurants or assorted restaurants, and you see some of the same raw pepper or red pepper. But this time around, it's been called spice. We call it spice. Because many other things has been <laughs> flavored into it. Now, you are still, <sighs> but there are other things that is making it sweet. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So we call it what? Seasonings. So when your talent is unseasoned, is sour. It's what? Soured. Let me put it this way because of our time. I have the gift of administration. I have the gift of apostolic. I have the gift to start new things. But do you know that if that gift of administration is unprocessed, do you know that right now, maybe in the office, we have about five to six volunteers at different times working with us. But if I thought I have the gift of administration and I don't continue to process what I have, what you find that is that the people that follow me will begin to see what is wrong. And if I don't do what I need to do about it in order for me to step up to the next level, what will happen is that that then, even though it's been processed thus far, it then become again another raw material because there is room for it to even be processed even further. Does somebody get what I'm saying? So some of us have the gift of talking. But you are talking heresies. Are you with me? When you open your mouth, you are using it wrongly. It's a raw talent. Somebody say, we raw talent. That talent, they need to sit down. Why are people getting angry when I speak? How can I process like a raw rice that is cooked? What are the courses I can go for? Some of us see that we get angry easily. Oh, is there courses on... Sometimes ago, I went for a course, anxiety management. Are you with me? Anxiety what? Management. And begin to find out how to deal with. And there are courses out there, even with adult education, fear management. Because fear is a talent. Do you know that fear is a talent? Now, there are two people who distribute talent. Is either God or the devil. John 10, 10 said, say, for the thief cometh not, but to steal to kill, and to destroy. And the Bible said in the book of Galatians chapter 5, he said, the fruit of the spirit is joy, peace. He said, and the fruit of the flesh, the flesh is of the devil. Are you getting what I'm saying? He said, it's idolatry, it's adultery, it's lavishiousness, it's lying, it's strife, it's anger. It means that anger is a talent. There are some people that they are anointed. They, are, they, can, they can, on your behalf, if you don't know how to be angry, go and tell them what the issue is. They will take the anger on, put it on as a garment. And they will, go and, they will go and demonstrate the anger for you. We used to have them from where we were born. Now, someone has stabbed you wrongly. Someone has done something and you can't handle the person. You go and report to that person. In our country, in fact, we use the military. Somebody stole something from you or somebody accused you wrongly. And you've talked and you have abused. Your mouth is not powerful enough. You go and pay the army people. Now, they have the power because they have the talent of beating. They know where to beat somebody that the person will die. They know how to beat the person that the person will never smell the door of your business again. They will never even embarrass you again. They will beat them one time and forever, even in eternity, they will never trouble you again. <laughs> are you getting what I'm saying? Now, those people are talented to do what you could not do on yourself. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, you go from the point of seeing what your talents are to processing the talent through seasoning it. Is somebody with me? 
And from what I've just explained now, beyond seasoning, number two, means that if you cannot process the talent, it means that you can delegate or employ the talent or the people that can process your talent. Are you with me? I'm a gifted orator. I'm a gifted writer. I say to my wife sometimes when I'm writing, nobody distracts me because it's like a flow. When I'm writing or typing my book, or I'm having an idea. I don't even want to see my children. Are <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Because at that moment, it's like the door of that information has opened to me. So even my wife will stand in front of me and she's talking to me. And I'm like, and then I stop here and I say to her, he said, it's very important. I said, no matter how important it is, please hold on just a few minutes. Let me finish this paragraph. Are you getting me? Because information are volatile to me. Meaning that if I let that moment pass, that information can disappear. Are you with me? Now, no matter how well I write, I'm also anointed to misspell. And I have, I'm anointed to miss some grammar and blow some. Passionately, someone was with me a few days ago. I was typing something. And I pressed send before realizing that I have not progressed. I said to him, he says, that's me. And that's why it goes first to uh, Pastor Quinn. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, in processing my gift, I have to understand what the weaknesses of my gift. So you can delegate your weakness to other people in order for your giftedness, your talentedness to be better processed. If somebody gets what I'm saying. So what I do in that study is that I give other people what I write, my letters, my book. And I say, you know what? This is what I've written. This is what makes sense to me. Read it if it makes sense. And let me to remove the, non, the nonsense. There are people around your life. There are people living on earth who can remove the nonsense in your talent. And when the non is removed, you have a good talent. The difference between extraordinary and ordinary is just the extra. Are you with me? So in processing your talent, you want to go as far as finding the extra to add to it. He said that the one that had five talents came and he multiplied another five to add to it. By the grace of God, before the end of this year, and as we saw last year, now, I teach in this church. One of my greatest gifts or, or, or my greatest prayer in this church is that before the end of this year, we have other people also who can teach. In fact, who can bless you better. Because I have one talent. And if that talent can be multiplied in other lives, are you getting what I'm saying? Meaning that if the master comes, we can say what? I have now what? More talent. Is somebody get what I'm saying? You have been born again. That is a gift. It's a talent that God has given to you. Who else has been born again because of you? Who else has met Jesus because of you? Whose life have you impacted? Some of us have had mentor. People who have spoke positively into your life. People who have helped you to achieve your destiny. Who are you mentoring? Who are you helping? Whose life are you there for? Who are you helping for the fulfillment of their destiny? I wish I can tell us more. But I really feel the burden for us to pray. But every raw talent is not profitable until it is profitable. Until it is what? Processed. Seasoned. But let me tell you something about talent. Even though talent needs to be processed, seasoned, and then you can invite other people to sharpen your talent, the quality of the talent determine its process. There are some talents in life that even when they are unprocessed, they are still valuable. Are you with me? In other words, there are some people who have certain talent, no matter where they are unprocessed, they will still look for them. People will search them for, even if they can't speak English. What they can provide solution for, what will happen? People will look for them. Let me give you an example. Many years ago, I was on the missionary field, and uh, we, we used to go and bring refugees to grow the church. We train them Bible school. We help them to settle down. Many of them have lost their parents. Some of them were even actually the one killing. They were part of the rebels. 
And they will tell you stories of how they hypnotize them, inject them to be doing rubbish. Their stories was pathetic. And one of them, when we sleep together, I notice that he's always tying. Every trouser he wears, there's something he's tying inside his tie. So he would tell you so much that after a while, if you touch him, you know that some is tying something. I said, what is your problem? Are you having pain in your leg? And he said, no, he's not having pain. I went to visit him. He said, I have raw gold. I've been hiding it for so long. I'm waiting for my opportunity to sell it. He got settlement into America. And I understand that he's a, he's a huge man. But what I want to say about it, I disbelieve him. Because when he brought the thing out, it was my first time in my life of seeing raw gold. I, all I saw is stone. It doesn't make sense. But even though it was unseasoned, even though it was unprocessed, it was still valuable. Now, let me tell you one thing. No matter who I've looked down on you, no matter who I've looked down on you, there is a gold inside of you. Let's rise up. It does not matter if the time for the processing of it has happened or not. But there is gold inside of you. There is power inside of you. There is giftedness inside of you. There is anointing inside of you. There is a boss inside of you. There is a director inside of you. Some of us, there is a marketer inside of you. Some of us, there is a designer inside of you. Some of us, you, are, uh, you, you will create businesses and employers for other people. But it might be so raw right now that we can't even see it. It might be so raw right now that we're even looking down on you. But no matter who look down on you, very soon they can be looking up to you. You're going to open your mouth. He said, Holy Spirit, I ask for the processing power to process the talent that God has placed in the inside of me. He said, Holy Spirit, I ask for the power to process the giftedness, the talent in the inside of me. Open your minds, please, and begin to pray. Spirit of the living God, I ask for the power to process the gifts of God that is in the inside of me. The talent that God has embedded in the inside of me. I'm the hero. Lord, Holy Spirit, power me. Power every talent inside of me. Help me to process them that it emerge as gold, as diamond, as platinum. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Let's turn our Bible to the second prayer, James chapter 1 verse 17. And please read it for me, if possible, in the English Standard Version. English Standard Version. ESV. In the English Standard Version. And you're going to pray from it. He said, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of light, with whom there is no variableness or, or shadow or is due to change. What God has placed in the inside of you is not due to change. That is why the richest place on earth is the mortuary. Because many people die with what they ought to fulfill here on earth. There are so many people who died as cleaners where God has called them to be employers of labors. But they have not processed what is in the inside. Is every good, one last prayer, I'm going to pray, say every good. This is where I needed the children in. If your children are not here, pray for them. Every good thing in the inside of my child, every good thing in my inside, that is unprocessed. Only God's power. Start processing them. Start making them useful for my world. Start making them useful for the kingdom of God. Start making them useful. Everything inside of my children. Everything inside of my wife. Everything in this church. Every giftedness in this church that is unprocessed. The power of the Holy Spirit to begin to power them. To begin to help. To begin to develop them in the name of Jesus. I ask for the power of the Holy Spirit upon the children in this church. Every child in this church, the grace of God in their life, the talentedness, the gift of God in them, begin to find expression. Nothing can stop their giftedness. Nothing that stop their glory in the name.
name of Jesus, for every child I prophesy, the gift of God to emerge, the gift of knowledge, the gift of wisdom, the gift of understanding, the gift of discernment, the gift of intelligence, the gift to create things, the gift of football, the gift of, of administration, the gift, the gift of leadership in all of our children, in the precious name of Jesus who pray. Somebody said with me, it is working. It is working in the precious name of Jesus. I decree over your life that from now on, everything embedded in the inside of you will not be buried. I decree that everything embedded inside of you will not be buried. The glory of God that is inside of every child in this church will come alive in the precious name of Jesus. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Holy Spirit, we thank you. Thank you for the word that you have sent to us. Thank you, Lord, for every talent that is represented here today. In our lifetime, we will see the profiting on this talent, on this giftedness that is together here this morning. We will see the glory of it in Jesus' precious name. Somebody say with me, it is working. In Jesus' precious name.